Yeah. Oh, I'd love it. <laughs> Look at it. What year is it? It's a 2009 Crown Vic. Oh, it is. Car 347. Which is actually a damn good car. I know that. <laughs> I know that. I can hit the AC to it. It's pretty entertaining. Yeah. All right, can you hear me out there? All right, we got two carat diamonds right now for fifteen thousand dollars. We've got two carat diamonds for fifteen thousand that you can pick up for a song. Or I will arrest. All right, everybody, hold up your Rolex watches. Hold up your Rolex watches, and we'll take them all, put them in the back of the car, and we'll be on our way. No problem. We don't want any trouble here. Give us all your Rolex watches and your diamonds. <laughs> do you have a Department of Corrections jumpsuit back? Yeah, I do. I do. I do. Fantastic. For over 40 years I have been in this business. The trust my clients have placed in me is so important. This is about continuing the growth of this business on that trust and the standard we have set. This is about what it takes to stay on top. Okay, so case, case in point, this is a 186 karat opal that Oliver absolutely fell in love with. And I, I, as he's wont to do, he just finds stuff and whether it's like a smart business decision or not, he'll buy something he really likes just because he likes it. You know, he wants to find a nice home for it. He wants to, he wants to write the ship. So we had it for a while here and eventually Oliver brings it to Rodney and says, hey, uh, make this into something. So Rod did the bezel on this. Hey Rod. Hey bro. So this is this is Rodney. He is uh, one of our jewelers here who specializes in fabrication, and this is his work. So um, take me through it, Rod. What, what do you think with that? I don't remember this thing. Oliver basically handed that to you as a raw stone. Yeah, yeah, and, and he says, "Hey, make a make a, a border to go around it," and I sweated it forever. I don't know if you can see <laughs> that. But look, look, look at all the. Now the, the opal man. stunning. Yeah. So it's uh, as you can look at the box, you can see that it's uh. Pretty it's old. legitimately old, yeah. Yeah, 186 carats. I oh. made this like my first year here. How many hours do you have in that bevel? Uh, 10, 12. Wow, oh, really? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, because you can see where I had to figure out where to put the points to. To, to, to hold yeah, it. Yeah, to hold it and not drop it. <laughs> the blues is what gets me, man. Yeah. Back's not so bad either. So. Now it's an amazing stone. So the, the, the stone, the, uh, in Australia, where this is at, every, everything's underground. It's desert, so the housing, everything, it's all tunnels, man. Like the, the pool hall, everything's there. If you want to go drink a beer, you got to go in the ground. I love it. Yeah, he uh, had great, great plans. He sell like silk too, man. Yeah, yeah. So all the watches and the jewelry up front. The back here, we do all the repairs and manufacturing. Uh, I've got every tool that I need to do anything in the jewelry industry: lasers, microscopes, steamers. You name it, we got it. So, if you got need something done, this is a place to bring. You ready? There's people passing by. That's There's wait. Because <laughs> they're going to judge me. <laughs> You're so mean. Hi, I'm Corinne Smith. Um, I'm part of the second generation. I grew up coming here as a kid. We did a lot of filing and wrapping presents growing up. So, I've been in the business a long time. I took a little time off to go follow one of my passions, horseback riding in college, and something I still do today. We ride competitively in Arizona and California, but mostly I gained an inspiration for colored stones and gemstones here in the industry. Growing up and traveling with my dad, we would go you know, to Thailand and all these different countries and I'd watch them sort stones. And I was like, so cool, because these stones come out of the earth a different color just because one trace element changes. And I just thought that was so awesome. One thing I wanted to discuss was um, trying to figure out a way to take these really pretty bigger sapphires. These are all sapphires. Um, the blue and the pink and the yellow mm -hmm. um, and make it into a bracelet like this which has you know it's kind of a simple tennis bracelet but um, nobody makes a nine by seven millimeter head to set these in and 
Uh, so we'd have to have the blank made and then set our stones in it. And we could we could make the blank here, but I don't think it would be economical for us to do it. So I, I want to take it yeah. um, out of the store. What are we doing with, what's, what's up with this lot that we're doing? So these ones, um, yeah. Corinne picked out and wanted some earrings. So we have that sort of set up for you. Oh, cool, okay. Um, white gold. Is that a diamond you're adding in there? No, okay. no additional stones. Okay. Um, just some movements, like a jump ring there so that the bottom moves. Darted prongs to sort of play off of the angles mm -hmm. of the stones themselves. And it's topaz imperative, so I don't want to do it too heavy. Yeah. Or get price pointy with like added diamonds. What are our thoughts on some of the other stuff? So... These guys are going to be um, earrings too. Okay. So they're going to match. I don't know if we have... We decided like this design. But, but yeah, we're gonna spread them out like that. We were talking about trying to bring that a little bit closer together. Yeah, yeah. To look at. Yeah. Are you still talking about that? Yes. Okay. Lots of times we don't spend enough time discussing our different sales techniques. When you have a, a veteran staff like I do, a lot of people already have their own style. And um, Ryan's style is very effective. So today we're going to have a small meeting and we're going to talk about Ryan's style and uh, let some of the others on the sales team maybe gleam a few ideas in which will make them better at their job too. We changed our whole profit margin structure with Don. We went to a really, really slim margin to compete. The idea being that we're only selling two, three, four, five carat diamonds. So a 10% margin is still a significant amount of money if the stone costs $25,000. So we basically, like I try to go through the four C's in probably the simplest way I possibly can. And I try to relate it to something that they can understand as well. So like color, for instance, right? So when I talk about like D color, I talk about like a clear glass of water, right? So it's very easy to imagine that. And when I talk about E color, it's like dropping a, a, like a little drop of champagne in there. And that's how much the color difference really is, right? And it's very easy for them to understand. And as you keep going down the scale, you add more drops of champagne, right? Until you get to a full glass of the Z, right? And then when I go to clarity on, on a stone, basically I kind of relate it to like a, like a birthmark. Everybody has them, they're not gonna change, they're not gonna grow, they're not gonna move, they're not gonna, anything like that, right? What I absolutely love about Ryan's uh, ability to sell diamonds is his um, innate ability to break down these larger concepts into really digestible pieces. I mean, for me being the watch guy, I've learned so much on how to emotionally sell diamonds, how to connect it to the person. And um, I think Ryan's just absolutely brilliant at that. Last month, we had a very good friend of ours, uh, unfortunately get involved with an armed robbery. And uh, not sure what happened, but um, he was shot a number of times. He's still alive, but he's not in good shape. So it's obvious to me that we need to start taking some necessary precautions and maybe reevaluating our entire security system that we have here in place and some of the methods we use to uh, try to dissuade someone from uh, maybe robbing us when they're casing our store and stuff like that. Um, so we went out, we reached out to the Scottsdale Police Department and we asked them to come in. They have a crime prevention division. If we hear active gunshots coming from outside, you're we're going in. If it's nothing, we're gonna be like, all right, let's, let's wait, 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 we'll do that. But if we hear something or we hear screaming coming inside, like oh, you know, something horrible is happening, we're coming in. We asked them to come in and talk to the staff. And uh, this is in an effort to kind of start to set up some new policies and procedures and get them in place when we feel threatened. So we're nearing completion of our expansion. At this point, they have leveled the floor and readied it for the flooring to go down. We're getting ready to remove this temporary wall after six months. Uh, finally, uh, we have the glass company in here framing all the openings or the glass.
glass that will be in by next Thursday. I can't wait to see the lights up top. We've got this um, incredible ceiling here, and it looks like it's almost plumbed out for wire and light. That's going to be absolutely amazing. Most importantly, I can't wait to get a chair. That's going to be great. Yes. I've been... Uh... <laughs> we, George has been without a chair now for six months, so he's a little, he's a little testy about it. So if we come back here, you can see... The watchmaker's clean room, Ben's clean room. It has come to the point now where flooring is set up, glass goes in, and we'll start moving his equipment in here. So that'll that'll go very quickly. And then the last part of the project, you know, the installation of the spiral staircase, and that'll go in this area. With, it really will. It has one turn up to the landing. Yeah. Right on. It's so, like something. Well, it is. It's starting to look like something. We are about two weeks away. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Oliver Smith, and I really appreciate your support. Hit like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon.